Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm gonna find out how far a car with a keyless entry can be driven without the actual key fob. As we all know, in older cars you have a key and sometimes a remote to lock and unlock the car. For example, in my 2007 Toyota Camry V6 here, I have two buttons to unlock and lock the car and two extra buttons, one to open the boot and one to activate the panic alarm. Here is the next generation Toyota Camry V6 and the key fob is still the same with all the buttons as you can see except it has keyless entry option. Keyless cars are becoming more popular mainly because of the convenience it gives to get in and out of the car. The idea is to leave the key fob in your pocket or in your bag and as you walk into the car, the car will recognize the presence of the key fob within the acceptable proximity. So with a gentle grab of any door handle, we'll unlock the car by the sensors located inside the door handle and the same goes to lock the car as you leave. You simply tap the door handle and the car will lock the car by itself. Now, in my last video, I was trying to find out what would happen if I would press the start button while I was driving. The idea was to find out if I can turn off the engine in case of an emergency. If you haven't watched that video, I will put a link in the description down below. And while I was shooting that video, I realized that there are certain situations that allows you to drive the car without actually having the key fob kept inside the car. So let's see what happened. The key fob in the keyless car should be in presence within a certain distance from the car's ignition module. So let's find out the range for car's ignition module. So let's try to put the key fob somewhere outside of the car. I've got my letterbox standing closer to the car. So let's try to put the key fob in the letterbox. Alright, the moment of truth, here I'm pressing the brakes and push the button to start. Nope, I can't start the car. It says the key is not detected. The key fob is too far away and the ignition module can receive a signal from the key fob. Ok, let's try to bring the key fob over to somewhere closer to the car. Here I'm placing the key fob on the hand rest on the door. Let's see what happened now. Nope, still too far away. It can't detect the keys. What if I put the key fob on the roof? Nope, still too far away. It can't detect the keys. Okay, so it seems the key fob has to be inside the car in order to be able to start the car. But what if you start the car with the key fob and then take it away? Alright, so let's try that. As you can see, the car is in start and let's go ahead and put the key fob back into the litter box. Let's go for a quick drive, see if we can drive the car, and if we can drive the car, how far we can drive the car. Okay, here we go. The warning message is saying that the key is not detected, and it doesn't seem to be going away. While I'm continuing to drive, I'm going to talk about three things about keyless systems, mainly when you buy a brand new car. Keyless entry option is an optional extra, so you have to pay some money to have this option in the first place. Then there's the reliability. This car has been a Toyota, that's not a big deal. But in case if the keyless system did go bad eventually, then you can be in for big trouble. As in most cases, a keyless system can only be programmed at the dealer and that is definitely going to be a $500 plus repair depending on the brand of the car of course. If that is no big deal for you, 
then this is a cool option to have. Another thing is that some people like that feeling of turning a key to start the car in the same way some people still like to drive a manual transmission. It is just a matter of personal preference. As an option, it gives you the convenience of getting into the car and driving off with a push start button. Very handy if you come into the car in a hurry. Let's say you're trying to get into the car in a rainy day with some groceries in your hand from the supermarket or you're doing the school run. If that is the case with you, a keyless system can weigh the price as an option. Another thing is that how to get into the car if you have a dead battery in your key fob or the key fob itself isn't working. Well, that's a cool trick for that, so that's going to be another video. Stay tuned for that by subscribing to the channel. So back to the driving now and it seems I can drive the car as long as I like without the key fob because the car was started with the right key and I believe the manufacturers programmed the car's computer to cooperate in a situation like this. So what would happen if I stopped the car and kill the engine? I'm almost home now so let's do that and see what happens. So now it's time to shut the engine. Alright, it's asking me to put the gear into neutral. Alright. So when I try to start the car now. Ah. So it says the depress brake pedal, touch engine switch with key. So now it can detect the key. Now I can't start the car and I need the keys. Actually I was kind of anticipating that this would happen. So let's wrap up this video now. I wanted to find out how far a car with a keyless entry can be driven without the actual key fault. The simple answer is as far as you like or as far as you want to drive. It seems that you only need the key fault to start the car. The purpose of this video is that you know sometimes we never know we have a dying battery in something until the battery goes totally flat, like in remotes. But this doesn't. It is nothing. So hopefully this has a flat battery. So what I did so far is to replicate a situation of your key fork has a dying battery that has just enough battery left to get the car started and the battery is dying while you're driving. Well, now you know what to do if you had to go through the same situation, so do not turn off the engine until you go home or to a place where you can buy some extra batteries. And more importantly, keep an extra battery for the key fork in the glove box at all times, because you never know when you're going to need them. So how do you think your car will react in a case like this, and what are the cool features your car has? Let me know by putting a comment down below. I would love to hear from you guys and I'll try to read every single comment as much as I can. And also if you have any suggestions for future videos, you can also mention it down below in the comment section. So thanks for checking out this video and remember, I post new videos every week so if you haven't subscribed, consider subscribing so you'll never miss another video. I'll see you in the next one.